we are discussing about uh, the application of free electron theory and uh, in the last class we have uh, uh, seen how the free electron theory can explain the electronic specific uh, heat for metals as we have seen uh, that uh, if we use the classical theory the electronic specific heat for metals it is uh, 3n kv and uh, it is uh, a constant so it does not depends on temperature so if we plot that uh, cv uh, versus uh, t uh, it is quite a constant but uh, experimentally we have seen that the specific heat does not uh, behave like a constant with temperature at the very low temperature it increases uh, quite linearly and then it becomes a constant so using the quantum mechanical behavior of uh, the electrons inside the metals and uh, with the help of free electron theory we can explain this uh, behavior of the specific heat with the temperature today i'll discuss uh, another application of free electron theory which is known as the pauli spin paramagnetism before that uh, please observe this uh, table first what we can see from that table that uh, in the upper row there are certain metals which are lithium sodium potassium rubidium and cesium and uh, we have compared these metals with uh, some rare gases helium neon argon krypton and xenon what we can observe from this table we can see that if we uh, just uh, extract one electron from each and every metal they becomes the rare gases but this is not uh, so much interesting phenomena what is uh, interesting here it is that uh, this metals so the paramagnetic properties and the magnetic susceptibility if we find out uh, through classical theory we get that the magnetic susceptibility which is uh, denoted by chi p is n mu b square by k b t where is the electronic concentration a number of electrons per unit volume or for monoatomic uh, metals that is uh, that means monoatomic means uh, if it for the monovalent metals it is equivalent to the atomic concentration also what we can see from this expression it is clear that uh, the paramagnetic susceptibility which is proportional to the reciprocal of temperature that means in simple way we can say that uh, the chi p depends on temperature but in reality or experimentally we see that chi p does not varies with temperature and another thing if we want to calculate uh, the order of uh, this uh, chi p for example if we take uh, that uh, the atomic concentration which is near about 10 to 22 per centimeter cube and at the room temperature that is t is equal to 300 kelvin then uh, from the above relation we can predict the chi p should be the order of 10 to the power minus 4 per centimeter cube where mu b is uh, the bore magneton but experimentally it does not match with the with this calculation what we get from experiment it does not match with this calculation experiment shows that chi p does not vary with temperature it is a constant quantity and chi p the value that is the paramagnetic susceptibility is about 10 to the minus 6 per centimeter cube so how to explain this discrepancies of the classical theory for that uh, if we consider that uh, the electrons follows fermi dirac statistics for their energy distribution so first correction should be that uh, within the metal if we consider the metals there are lots of free electrons according to our drude theory 
here we consider that these electrons follow the fermi dirac statistics for their energy distribution they does not follow the maxwell boltzmann statistics this is the first correction and the second thing is this uh, and this behavior was first uh, demonstrated by uh, the great sci great scientist pauli so the effect bears his name so let's take uh, if we uh, if we insert the small correction how could we explain the experimental paramagnetic susceptibility so what he did what pauli did for that case he first considered that the metal is at absolute zero temperature electrons are distributed among different energy levels according to fermi dirac statistics so if we think that uh, one dimensional potential will to uh, show the different energy levels what uh, he said he said that uh, this uh, within this energy levels the electrons are follow following the fermi dirac statistics that means each and every energy level contains two electrons with opposite spins and now if that's so then if we plot the energy versus uh, n e curve what is the n e so we have explained in our previous uh, uh, video if you forget please uh, go through that one that uh, n e is the number of uh, field energy states this is the number of field energy states and uh, n e is d e into a v so what is the d d e is the ab, uh, number of allowed energy states and a v is the probability of filling an energy states of energy e okay so these are all explained in our previous classes you can go through that one now so as we have uh, seen that de is equal to of the form of c e to the power half so now n e varies with energy as e to the power half n e is uh, the number of field states the number of field states d is the number of allowed energy states okay okay so now uh, so if we plot uh, this any versus uh, e curve we might get a parabolic nature and at absolute zero temperature we know that all the energy levels up to certain energy are completely filled by the electrons and this certain energy level is known as the fermi energy level and is denoted by ef0 here the red lines are the energy levels remember that there is a big difference between energy level and energy states here i am considering the energy levels and since the electrons follows the fermi dirac statistics hence each level contains two electrons of opposite spin okay okay now if at that moment if we apply an external magnetic field that means uh, if uh, this is our metal and if we place this metal in an external magnetic field what will happen that uh, and this magnetic field are applying in such a way that some of uh, or half of the electrons within the uh, metals half of the free electrons are orient their spins according to the applied magnetic field or along the direction of the applied magnetic field that means if uh, we consider some electrons in such way there and the spins are along the upward direction and this upward spin let's say this is parallel to the applied magnetic field and half of the electrons the spin of the half of the electrons are anti parallel to the magnetic field 
so this we have assumed that the magnet external magnetic field is applied in such a way that the half of uh, uh, that the spins of the half of electrons are parallel to the magnetic field and other half spins within anti parallel to the magnetic field so what will happen then what is the effect of this magnetic field so now let's take another color so now the energy of an electron with spin parallel to the magnetic field lowered by an amount mu vh we all know that one that uh, if uh, this is the electron and whose spin is uh, upward direction and the applied field applied magnetic field h is also in the, uh, in the same direction then the energy of that electron is lowered by that amount mu v h similarly if we consider one electron whose spin is anti parallel to the field the same amount of energy will be raised or increased so the applied magnetic field increases this amount of energy for some electron whose spin is anti parallel to the magnetic field and decreases this amount of energy for those electrons whose spin is parallel to the applied magnetic field so uh, if we want to understand pictorially then it uh, behaves like that one so before applying the magnetic field at absolute zero temperature if we plot that uh, the energy and the number of field states what we found we found that uh, up to certain level all the energy levels are filled by electrons but when we apply magnetic field let's say along this uh, direction the magnetic field the certain levels energy levels are decreased with the amount of mu vh and for the anti parallel spins the same amount of energy level will be increased or in other way you can think that the energy of the electrons of the parallel spin decreased by the amount mu vh so here we get uh, some uh, empty energy levels and for the anti parallel spins mu v h amount of energy increased so we get some field states in this anti parallel section but as we know that mu v h the increased or decreased amount of energy which is very less than the fermi energy so how do you know that uh, this mu v h is very less uh, than the uh, the fermi energy level let's check it so in general uh, we know that the fermi energy for metals is uh, at absolute zero temperature is 5 electron volt so if we apply a field of strength 10 to the power 5 gauss so mu v h is becomes 10 to the minus 3 electron volt so due to this high amount of magnetic field there is a change in energy level which is the order of 10 to the minus 3 electron volt and it is comparatively very small to that of 5 electron volt so that means a change in energy levels is very less compared to their fermi level and this situation is very unstable and as a result immediately equilibrium of the two halves must uh, equilibrium must be attained and as a result two halves must be filled up to some certain energy level so what will happen then so it it uh, looks like that one that uh, uh, let's take uh, what is the phenomena here uh, what will happen there will be a flow of some electrons of uh, higher energy to this 
part this empty states so certain some electrons from this anti parallel section goes to the parallel section and as a result the field states will increase or field energy levels number of field energy levels increased in the parallel section and in that anti parallel section that much amount of energy levels will be decreased and as a result it looks like according to this picture so we can see that uh, to maintain the equilibrium condition the energy levels must be filled up to certain energy level which is uh, the fermi energy level but at the lower part from the zero energy level there is certain lowering of the energy level and there is certain increased of the energy level and ultimately there is a change of energy is twice mu v h here as we know from our previous lecture that uh, how many electrons will take part in this transformation and it is very small at 0 kelvin is the order of n t over t f so how could we find that one uh, for that uh, please uh, go through the previous uh, lecture you will find that uh, this is that this is the number of electrons which are taking part for this transformation the change of their energy level is twice mu v h so to change the overall 2 mu v h amount of energy the number of electrons which are taking part for that is n t over t f per interval at temperature at which temperature it is at the room temperature we can say it is at the uh, room temperature also because kbt is uh, much much less than the fermi energy so how we can find out please go through uh, the previous lecture of a specific uh, heat for metals you can find there and these electrons will lie near the fermi energy levels so now what was our chi p that is the paramagnetic susceptibility it was uh, uh, i think in mu b square by k b t but uh, right now in is changed by n t over t f so if we apply we can put that n t by t f mu b square by k b t and ultimately it gives us n mu b square k b t f so here t f is a fermi temperature which is also constant so from that result we can see that chi p is independent of temperature there is no temperature term so qualitatively we have explained that uh, why the paramagnetic susceptibility does not depend on temperature and for that we have used the free electron theory and we have taken that the electrons or el electrons are distributed in their energy levels according to Fermi Dirac statistics in the next uh, lecture we will find the same result through quantitative discuss it.